No, 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 no. You're not getting me today, pal. When the Arizona Sunshine remake was announced and they said it would be using the same engine from Arizona 2, I have to say I was pretty excited. The original Arizona came out back in 2016, six years ago. It was one of the most fun VR games out there, being well received by almost everyone. After playing through the remake, I have to say that this was one of the best games I've played in a while. Now I'm not saying that this is the best game ever, or even game of the year, but Arizona delivered something that I didn't even realize I needed. A simple yet engaging zombie shooter that not only feels good, but looks great too. Things didn't work out between us, buddy, but uh, I'm out of here. Now, while Arizona doesn't really have a deep, compelling story, the gameplay keeps you engaged the whole time. The game starts off with you waking up from your camp to a zombie dying to one of your traps, and from there, it slowly starts throwing small amounts of zombies your way, getting you familiar with how to play. As you make your way through the first level, you find a radio and realize that you aren't the only survivor out there. This is a good thing for the main character, because he clearly has been on his own for far too long, giving the nickname Freddy to the zombies just to feel like he's talking to someone. And for being alone in the zombie apocalypse, he sure has kept a sense of humor. Hey Fred, what you doing? Chilling? <laughs> As you make your way through each level, you'll need to be looting every car you see. When you enter a building, you'll want to search every room, drawer, or locker to find anything you can, from ammo to guns, melee weapons, or even explosives to help you along the way. Now, none of this is groundbreaking for a game, but the simplicity of just shooting zombies and trying to survive and find ammo is something that I didn't realize I needed, and how much I missed it. The game follows a pretty simple concept of making your way through levels, finding keys or different parts to unlock the next path, and when you do, you get hit with either a mild or large wave of zombies to defeat before you can move on to the next part. Oh fuck! Fuck, here they come! The game does have a nice variety of different zombies to defeat. One thing that I wish the game did have was some kind of boss fight to defeat throughout the game, but it does have zombies that are a little more challenging to take down. Some zombies have helmets on that in order to kill you'll need to shoot directly in the face or even use a melee weapon to take it out, or unload as many rounds into the chest as you can. There are also fat zombies that will take multiple headshots to kill, and there are even some giant zombies, wherever they came from, that take a lot more damage to take down. The game has a nice variety of different guns to find throughout the way. From different pistols to submachine guns, assault rifles, and shotguns. Not to mention there are grenades and proximity mines here and there. You'll also find different melee weapons along the way, from shovels to axes or machetes. And for all my Walking Dead fans out there, I have to say, running around with a hatchet in one hand and a pistol in the other makes me feel like my name is Rick Grimes and it feels amazing. Now, while the game doesn't have boss fights, it does give you some intense waves of zombies that if you're not prepared for, it's easy to get overwhelmed and get taken down. Now, on the advice of Brian from Without Parole, shout out to the GOAT, I did my first playthrough on Survivor, which is basically hard mode, and for some reason, that feels like the way you should play through the game for the first time. Now it's not too difficult on this mode, but it does feel like the perfect amount of challenge. I'm looking forward to going back and playing this again through on Apocalyptic, just for that extra bit of challenge. I'm gonna rip every last one of you to shreds. Lieutenant Parker here. The outbreak is now beyond our control. Our orders are clear. We're going to launch the nuke. 
Now, Arizona Remake includes both DLCs, The Damned and Dead Man. After playing through both of these, while they were both very fun and enjoyable additions to the game, the Dead Man DLC was surprisingly short. I was able to finish it in only 45 minutes, and that was with a few deaths. The Damned DLC, however, was definitely the better of the two in my opinion. It just felt like they put a little more effort into it. But either way, both are fun additions to the base game, and the fact that they're included in the remake is great. The game does have some small issues that I would like to see get fixed, but nothing that would be enough to make someone not give the game a try. Little things like picking up ammo can be difficult sometimes, but only in the sense that locking onto a grabbable object can be a little finicky. I'd just like to see a little bit of a wider range when you're trying to aim at an object. However, like I said, it's not enough to ruin the game by any means. Also, there can be an issue when you're trying to be quick on the go and reload your weapon in a tight situation where you go to reload your gun, switch out the magazine, and then grab back onto the stock to hold on and aim, and you'll end up just grabbing the magazine again and taking out the fresh clip you just put in. And while this really only happens with assault rifles, it's still kind of annoying. The only real issue that I found that actually was a problem for me was in the Dead Man DLC. When I was trying to climb a ladder and reaching out in front of me, it would just pull the gun off of my back, and so I couldn't climb the ladder properly unless I was trying to climb it slowly. And that was a little frustrating. Now, I saved the best for last, Horde Mode. This was honestly a mode that I did not expect to enjoy as much as I did. It comes with four different maps to play and it also supports four player co-op. The first map is the canyon. This is definitely fun, but it does restrict you to staying in one zone. And that's definitely where the challenge lies in that map. The second map is the trailer park, and this was probably my favorite out of the four. A medium sized area with trailers that you can traverse through, grab ammo if needed, and other guns that spawn the more waves you complete. Just be careful not to get trapped in a trailer, because it can end very quick. The next map is Undead Valley. The map starts off very small and compact, but has a wall that you can blow out and reveal another section of the map that helps make surviving a bit easier, yet still being a challenging map. The fourth is the Old Mine. This map has a bit more open area compared to the rest, but has a lower light, making it a little harder to see, which adds to the experience of the level and overall is another great map to play. The Horde mode gave me the feeling of playing Call of Duty Zombies, which used to be one of my favorite game modes out there, back in the day. Overall, Arizona Sunshine Remake is one of my favorite games to have come out this year, and I've had a great time with it so far. It's available on PSVR 2, Steam, and MetaQuest for only $29.99, and it's only a $10 upgrade if you already own the original Arizona Sunshine. Even though I only had to pay the $9.99 upgrade, I would have not been disappointed paying full price for this game. And honestly, I'm probably going to pick it up from my MetaQuest 3. That way I can take it to friends' houses and show them, or if a friend comes over, we can both play at the same time. So if you enjoy good shooting mechanics and games with great replay value, especially if you have a friend to join up with you, then don't sleep on Arizona Sunshine Remake.